First, I want to introduce my assistants here, Josh, Jacqueline, and Lindsay, all from Little Lake Harbor Intermediate School. And we want to talk a little bit about the hard clam. And as Eric said, it's a very important resource here, you know, in southern New Jersey. And we're going to start right off with a, with a clam here. And Josh has a clam, and he's going to tell us a little bit about uh, the size of, of the clam that he has here. Um, this is a little neck clam. It is the smaller, or it's like, wait, it's the... We're just going to help him out. It's just, he's going to tell us about the, the minimum size that we can have to keep a clam here in New Jersey. And how, how large is that clam? Um, a clam has to be at least one and a half inches in diameter to keep to eat for your house. And, um, and this is a gauge, and if a clam can go fit through this hole, then you're not, it's illegal to keep it in New Jersey. But if it doesn't go through, then you can keep it for eating. Okay, thank you, Josh. Next we have Jacqueline, and she's going to show us a different size clams and uh, what we use of the, the clams here. And uh, Josh, again, is going to help us out here. And we start out with... The little neck. The little neck is the smallest clam that you can find. <clears throat> it's used for steaming. And then our next one is the top neck. The top neck, you can crack it open and eat it raw. And that's the... This is the second size. The next one is the cherry stone. The cherry stone is mainly used for clams casino and other foods that you use with clams. And the last one is the chowder clam. And the chowder clam is mainly used for grinding into chowder. Okay, thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, next, Lindsay's gonna help me here. I'm gonna make an attempt to open a clam here and she's gonna identify, hopefully, some of the parts for us. So, uh, Jacqueline, you wanna hold the microphone here for us, maybe? Okay, uh, first of all, when, when we open this, please, students, don't try to open these clams yourselves. Uh, you can cut yourself very, very easily. Even though this clam knife is not real sharp, um, I've seen too many people go to the emergency room. So this is to be done by adults, okay? Okay, um, these are called abductor muscles, and they hold the clam together. This is the foot of the clam, and that helps it from moving up and down. And that's the toughest part of the clam. Back here is the siphon tubes, where it controls where the food goes in and out, and the water transfers through the clam. And this part around here is the stomach and all the other organs. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, we're going to show you both recreationally and commercially how we harvest the clams here. Here in Great Bay especially, the water is generally below 10 feet deep. And uh, recreationally, if you're here in the bay, you'll see people out in the bay trying to catch some clams. And one of the first ways is we call it treading clams. And Jacqueline here has a pair, before she even starts, a pair of little, I don't know how stylish they are, but booties. And why we put something on her feet is you don't want to go in the bay here because Unfortunately, things, whether it's people have thrown bottles in the water or sharp shells or a conch shell or whatever, it's too easy to cut your feet. So you definitely want some foot protection and also many times people wear a glove when they get down to pick up the clam. But then basically you're going to be in water from maybe your chest down to your knees and Jack was going to show us how we go about catching a clam. You have to put your feet and feel them across the mud and when you find something that feels like a clam nice and hard you have to all you have to do is bend it over and pick it up and put it in your basket okay thanks Jacqueline the next uh, Lindsay's going to show us the next way that many people will do this recreationally it's called a scratch rake and again we're going to be in water probably knee deep or less and what you'll be on maybe a sandbar and you'll be digging through the clams through the mud and by the way these clams are anywhere from uh, generally uh, buried maybe an inch down to three or four inches in the, either the sand or the mud. Okay, and this is what recreationally we do mostly. Now we're going to get to the what the commercial people do. We have Josh up on our roadway here, and you can see here we have two, two things here that the clamors will use. And the first is a set of clam tongs, and you're going to have to make believe that Josh is probably in, in a boat in maybe six or seven feet of water. Okay, so he's standing in a boat, and if you could see... We have, and if you want to work those, Josh, these work like big scissors. Okay, can you pull them apart? The other way. There we go. There we go. 
And if you can see, they work like large scissors and you again, you're digging these out of the mud, okay? That's one, that's a, one way that the commercial men do. And the other is using a rake, which Josh is also going to show us. And before he does, I just want to turn this over. Maybe we can get a look at the teeth on this rake. These teeth go down in the mud. Hopefully, you'll catch the clams. It'll go into the basket. And how that works is I'm going to turn this rake back over, is that you're drifting along in your boat. And if you can see Josh up here pulling the rake through the mud, very hard work, OK? So these are basically the four ways, and they've been the, the, the ways that we have caught clams for 100 years in this area.